Zoom. That is so disturbing. Um, hi. Uh, welcome to Binary Jazz. If we didn't have really bad intros to start, we definitely do now that uh, Zoom is yelling at us that we're recording. Um, this is a podcast uh, that includes uh, three individuals, uh, myself being one of them. I am Chris, Jazz Sequence on the internet. I am joined uh, with Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet. And we uh, do a show called Binary Jazz, wherein someone has a topic, and Gary and I try to figure out what it is. Usually it's Allison that has the topic, and then Gary and I try to figure out what that topic means or something. It's a show. It's a thing. It's fun. We've been doing it for a really long time. We've covered everything from yeah. Dyson Spears to Petrichor to what was the one I was thinking about yesterday? I was thinking about one yesterday and realized how enriched my life is because of this show. So, and then, and you, then you probably forgot remember. the specific yeah, you topic. Yeah, can't even remember what the topic was. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it was. It wasn't pertinent what the topic was. It was more pertinent that, like, the topic was relevant to something else I was doing. Maybe if I remember um, what that was, I remember what the topic was. It doesn't I would, matter. I would like to share the one piece of feedback <laughs> that we've gotten. Now, usually we do this at the end, but this... Oh, this uh, doesn't bode well. Yeah, no, it's... it's. Uh, this was on YouTube. Uh, oh, well, never mind. I don't know if the comment still exists. Uh, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't gone and checked. It's on episode 101010, which is Daffy Mission. Uh... And user Doge says, hey. Hey. That is the hey. one piece of feedback we've gotten in, 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 in <laughs> two weeks. So you heard it here first by Dogecoin. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would like to also say, hey. Hey. I was concerned you were going to give us some piece of feedback and then it was going to be in my head for the entire episode and like second guessing. Uh, but that is... Definitely not the case here. Yeah, no. Not no. even close. No, no, hey. no. Hey. Now you can just second guess for normal reasons. Yeah. Right. The normal, yeah, the, the, the normal, you know, amount that allegedly humans do. I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we took a break last week. Uh, we're back. Um, how's everyone feeling? Actually, we recorded a super secret episode last week. It's so secret that we didn't even know we recorded. And we deleted it. Yeah. Uh, we we the, actually, it, the executive board, uh, all three of us met <laughs> the executive uh, board. to discuss the uh, future of the show and the outcome. And we decided that, that it has no future. <laughs> but the outcome was. We should all just give up today. Maybe we may, might need to pick a different time when we record. I don't know. We'll find out in the future. So, uh, did did everybody, Chris? Did you take Monday off? Nope. Allison, did you take Monday off? Not a holiday here. Hmm. Yeah, I didn't think it was, but I don't know. I, I, I mean, sure no offense. I, we just don't celebrate everybody else's veterans. <laughs> um, yeah. um, uh, well, well, it seemed like it seemed like maybe it was a holiday or a bank, a bank holiday of some kind in the UK, but it was obviously not Memorial Day, but I don't know what it was. But there's a whole bunch of people that I work with on my team that also took like Monday or Friday and Monday off. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, I, am, I, I did not. For the first time in years, I'm at a con company that is uh, recognizes, not recognizes, a company that uh, has adopted US federal holidays. I'm not excited about taking Memorial Day off. I'd rather just work. Um, and I'm sure I could have traded it in that I wanted to, but it was like, whatever, it's fine. I'll just take it off. Three day weekend that somebody is forcing on me is, is kind of nice. Um, short story boring. Like it's the first time in a while that I've, I've in the years that I've had like us federal days off and, uh, in my head, like, I didn't think this through that, like, Hey, if it's a federal holiday, a bunch of stuff's going to be closed. So, right. um, I'm like, let's do dot, dot, dot. Oh, no closed. So I think I'm going to trade in a future, future, future holidays like that, that I'm not excited about and be like, uh, no, I'm going to have a three day weekend somewhere else when things are open and not everyone in the world is off. Less people, more conveniences for Gary, the win for everyone. I also Gary. think it's different this year amongst the years because we're home all the time. So we want to do a, a thing. 
versus like maybe other years where we would just be fine staying home but it's like there's been so much of that but it's like I'd like to go do some do something I'd like to sit in a movie theater with other people or like something we we went to a park and did a hike uh a park that I've been to myself several times to walk but the kids hadn't been to and uh and then there was like a playground at the end and there were only a few kids so let them play and be rambunctious and uh, that was a lovely morning and then what did I do in the afternoon oh then I worked on the uh fountain out back I have a fountain, fountain. water fountain that came with the house oh yeah it came with the house if I not recorded by the fountain I don't think you're... I definitely just pictured like a Hearst scale situation <laughs> <laughs> Like just like a very grand fountain, yeah, to be like huge. <laughs> yeah, I do feel a little like I should be like toasting with the martini or whatever when I'm near <laughs> it. It does feel very elegant, especially. I I will have to find a picture of the fountain and, and or record near it. Recording near it right now would be a little uh, rude because I cleaned it, and as a result, like it is now pumping like Niagara Falls in the summer. It is loud. Um, but when I cleaned it, I also bumped the pump and where the wire comes through. So like I filled it up and then two days later, it was like almost empty What the heck? and realized that I probably knocked like the plug loose that in the bottom, yeah, that pesky, pu- that pesky pump bump. It's, uh, well, it's, it's actually like, so I had, to, I got some like tar and like actually tarred the hole where the cable comes through last you didn't night. Need to get a, you didn't need to get a sump pump t- to fix your pump bump. I have a sump pump, but that's in the basement and I didn't install that. That was the guy that was, um, I told you about the guy. The, the what it really was, the there was a machine. lump in the pump that like, got bumps. He had opera on his phone and was putting in like the concrete over the sump line with his hand. And I walked down there because I heard this music. I, I'm sure I told you about this. Did I not? So when I had the sump pump installed, like they dug this trench, these guys in my basement and uh, the guy leading it, I can't, I wish I remember his name. Um, he was great, like wonderful to work with. Uh, he wasn't really a grump. Like, uh, what? He no, he was grump. not a grumpy, sumpy, pumpy. Um, he, uh, but he takes this, they dig this trench and then they put in the, the pipe and they put in the sump pump, blah, blah, blah. Well, then there's concrete over the trench. So the water comes down, it goes in there, whatever. Boring story. So I'm upstairs like working and I hear like opera music coming from the basement. Uh, and then I hear someone singing with it. I'm like, so I go downstairs just to see what's going on. Like I've been checking on the guys from time to time. And then, you, and then you hit your head on, on the stairs with a thump. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> um, so I get down there. He's got a five gallon bucket of concrete and he's scooping it out with his hand and he's singing along with this opera. And so one of the guys that's like been with him for years as a helper, like just makes eye contact with me and rolls his eyes and shakes his head. Like, yeah, this is just how he does it. So like just part of his method was listening to opera and singing along while he like lays this concrete by hand and making sure it's smooth. It was, I'm like, all right, what, if that's how you got to get it done. Um, but they were great. If you need a sump pump in Concord, North Carolina, you need to contact Sedona waterproofing. That's the name, which is weird because Sedona is not make any sense. <laughs> anywhere close to here. I guess it's like, Oh, there's a dry city. Let's, um, but the entire company is great to work with and very proud of their work and, you know, and reasonably priced. Like they weren't the cheapest quote I had, but they were not even anywhere close to the most expensive. I thought you were going to say reasonably talented, like at opera, <laughs> like reasonably fine. <laughs> yeah. Some pump in a show. What more could you want? It's fantastic. This episode is sponsored by Sedona, Sedona Waterproofing, Waterproofing of Concord-ish. I don't, actually don't know where they're out of. No, they are out of Concord because their office is right next to my Lowe's. Not my lows, the lows that I shop at. What a stupid story to get around to, like me putting tar in my fountain. <laughs> All right. Well, well, somebody else. There's a lump in the pump that you bumped, <laughs> <laughs> which made you want to grump. I mean, it's understandable. You had to get it over the hump. <laughs> yeah. What if he just talked like that all the time? I don't know. I don't know if I could handle. It. I can't. I'm, I'm looking at. I'm looking at my photos. Um, oh wait, no, that's not where I live. Where do I live? There's my house. You live on the all internet. Right. I'm going back to one of my early photos of the house. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, you live on the internet. Yeah. Okay. Here's a photo. I'm going to share this in Slack. 
this is some compelling content right now. Yeah, good, good audio content. <laughs> yep. yep. All awesome. right, so this is a this is a uh, pick. It'll show up. Your file has been shared to episodes. Uh, in the backyard, you can see right in the middle, a third in from the left of the fountain underneath the light. It's I don't know how far away it is there. It's actually running in that picture, which is cool. Ah, yes, there there it is. that's it. That's the fountain. And then past the fountain by ten feet, there's just a hill drop off. So. If you're wandering around back there in the dark, like stop at around the fountain or a few steps past, because you won't see the drop off and it's a long way down. And then there's, is there poison ivy at the bottom? Uh, no, the poison ivy's uh, to the right, quite a bit to the right. You, you wouldn't fall in the poison ivy there, the but you would- ivy labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> With David Bowie in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Decided. yeah. If I, poison ivy wouldn't stop me then. <laughs> It wouldn't stop me either. I'd just like bear, like just claw my poison, way through it. It's poison ivy doesn't stop invincible. you anyway, Gary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is fan. This is for what it's worth. Like last night, I had a bit of a headache, and I'm like, well, I need to take some Tylenol. So I took like maybe you just need to roll around the poison ivy for a little bit. A single children's Tylenol was plenty for me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Medication. I'm like, yeah. Medication kicks my butt. It's like the opposite of being redheaded. <laughs> Because, um, sorry, um, redheads are, something. yeah, redheads are, it, it makes sense, it makes sense. <laughs> redheads are more, um, uh, what's the word? Um, reactive, I guess? No, the opposite not of the, reactive. Uh, non, non-reactive? No. Like they need more um, anesthetic, oh, yeah. I think I did know that, yeah, yes. Now that you say that, I think I did know that. Geez, I need some headphones to keep my hair in order. <laughs> Your secret's out, Gary. <laughs> well, our our redhead, our little redhead is is a super taster, so I think that yeah, it's a lot a going on then. Yeah, yeah, and and obviously, and uh, like the other thing with redheads is they typically get sunburned faster because they're also usually paler. I don't know why that's a thing. Why is that I don't know thing? either. My, Human I'm evolution. All my redheaded friends, which makes it sound like I'm just hanging out in a crowd of redheads. Yeah, just like so. you go out with your redheaded friends. <laughs> there's the redheaded friends. Oh, the and third then there's stage redheaded, else. Third redheaded friends night. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> all three of my redheaded friends have reported back. <laughs> um. So the topic today. We do have topics. Yes. It's fountains. Is Not fountains. Elementary schismogenesis. Wait, what, 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 what? Sure it is. <laughs> and also, I love, I love that every, every time we record, there's that moment before I click into the Zoom that where I'm like, they're going to know this. <laughs> um, Say it again. Yes. Com- complimentary. Uh, Sismogenesis. Sismogenesis? Can you Hello. spell it? Schism. Schism. I am Genesis. O G E N E S I S. Schismogenesis. Complementary schismogenesis. Obviously, that's the schismogenesis where uh, <laughs> the one schisma the says to the you. other schisma, "You look great." You look really then, great today. <laughs> and then out of that, out of that compliment, <laughs> they have a baby. They so, have a baby schism. Uh, yeah, let's break this down a little. I don't like that. I don't like your methodology, Chris. Let's break this down. Apparently, I, I, too, I by did the way, break it down, Gary. I broke yeah, it not, into component parts. You just broke it. That's all you did. It's not broken down. It's just broken. Also, total aside, it turns out that I get in like t-shirt rotations because I'm fairly certain this was the one I was wearing last week. Yep. Yeah. So, so you're off the for a purple. while, it was purple. And now you're occupying. Yeah. Uh, maybe I need to adjust my stack of t-shirts so I get back into purple. I felt really powerful in purple. Um, so how, how do you, how do you, how do you, uh, this is far more, this is far more important. How do you organize your t-shirts? Do you just go with like, you do the laundry and then whatever goes on top goes on top or do you do, like, cause what I do is I cycle them. So whatever goes in the laundry and comes out gets put in the back of the pile 
or in that because i have a row actually so the back of the row so there's a, just a continuous line and it's not necessarily like exact like it obviously i don't have it like timed and it's the same order every time but like the new stuff goes in the back and then the other the older stuff gets pushed to the front so i'm not yeah, my t-shirt i would say my t-shirt sorting methodology it would be best categorized as complementary schismogenesis <laughs> no i uh, i don't know it's Rhonda has like the wardrobe and, and drawers and stuff. And I have like in the closet, I have a shelf where my shirts are, my t-shirts yeah. are I just hold them, put them on a shelf. Cause it's in the closet. The door is closed, whatever. Uh, so I, I kind of work. We always end up on top because you know, yeah. you can't get to the bottom. I probably get like six or five shirts, like in a rotation. And then those become the shirt until I'm like, like I just wore this shirt and it's probably true because it probably just happened to come out of the basket and I folded it and put it like at the top, like a day yeah. after I wore it. And then I'm, then I restack and that becomes the shuffle. But honestly, that means the ones in the bottom are, you know, it would take a lot for them to get back into the mix. I'm going to go home and flip all three stacks over, which will be confusing because then like, instead of having the neck, like sort of near the top in the middle, it will be face down. I have faith that you'll figure it out. <laughs> I, I suggest, I suggest, putting them on their side yeah i did that in college i always talked about filing my laundry because yeah. i literally in my drawer would file it straight up and down and yep. people thought that was the dumbest thing and i'm like no it's filed because at that point in life i cared what shirt i wore on certain days now i'm like you know i shower and put wear, a shirt on now like, you just wear occupy mars every day yeah i mean it, it's only a week i've been wearing it for a week it's still fine that'd be so gross. We got a total aside. We got a, um, it's like a Mr. Total... Rogers. You have seven occupies Mars t-shirts. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. That's a very good idea. <laughs> no, you should have one that has occupy something different every day. Yeah. There you occupy go. Occupy Tuesday and I could wear it on Thursday. Go through all the planets. <laughs> uh, occupy Mars, occupy Neptune, occupy Saturn, occupy Mercury. None of those other places seem like they'd be very good to occupy, but yeah, well, let's, let's do it. Um, so the last rover that landed on Mars, right, had the little uh, helicopter. Uh, it also, the landing equipment had audio uh, and recorded, like, the landing. I don't know if you listened to it or not. I don't think I'm I sure have. I was hyped afterward. Oh, you should, you should go listen. Just close your eyes and listen to it and just, like, imagine that this is, ah, landing on Mars. It's just so cool. Um, but the joke is that there is a higher percentage of functioning uh, Linux based audio cards cards on mars than there are on earth <laughs> and it's not i mean like it's a joke but it's it's not really like you know it's dang not totally functional though they had one microphone fail on the landing and that is complementary schismogenesis yeah so it's let's like really breaking apart complementary obviously in the case that there are two components right uh schismogenesis is a great word I don't know what it means, uh, but schism is a break. And Genesis is like the beginning or start, right? So, so using my powers of deductive reasoning, complementary schismogenesis is, is when two schisms get together and they have a little baby schism. What a baby schism. <laughs> I think that it is. Um, uh, uh, what does the baby schism look like? Is what I want to know. Like, like, like a small schism, obviously. Like a small yeah, schism. Like a, rip, a rip or a tear. Yeah. Or <laughs> oh, it's a, it's complementary schismogenesis is um, uh, two sides of the same story about the beginning of the end. That's a reach. That's a real big reach. I don't know why I'm so motivated to actually think this one through today. I just so, feel like, so, I feel like so, there's yeah. enough clues here, Chris. We should be able to get this one. I like my definition. I Chris, don't. Uh, so Double what you were saying, what you were saying is that schismogenesis is yeah. a story about the beginning of the end. And that complementary schismogenesis is the, the two conflicting or competing stories. So what are those? Yeah, schismogenesis is, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, what are the two stories of the beginning of the end then that are conflicting? Oh no, this is like a, a, 
literary device so that a reminder that you can have multiple endings or beginnings to the ending in your story. Um, no, I, I think, as I think about it now, complementary schismogenesis. Well, no, schism is like, schism is break, right? Like a tearing apart? Yes? We're not giving you any help, Gary. You went down this road. You're going to have to figure out your own way. <laughs> Genesis. Genesis is like the, like the, the creation, the beginning, the, like a seminal idea, right? Like the genesis of a thought is the beginning of a thought. No? So I just don't see how break and, and beginning stack. I got nothing. I, I've talked myself out of anything here. This isn't a real word. This. <laughs> Sorry for my distractedness. Um, Robin's like coming in and out of the room, like to clearly talking on the phone. <laughs> I'm just like being like. <laughs> Is you, are you on the laptop or do you have like a, a webcam perched on top of a monitor? I'm on a laptop. You should take the laptop next time comes in and point it at him and be like, now you're on air and he will scurry away. I think it's an important phone call. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have taken it like in the same room. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, that does make sense. Time will tell. That's fair. <laughs> Uh, he comes over and like slams the laptop closed. Like it's an important housing related call. We'll understand. Yeah. That would like be the, the genesis of this episode. The <laughs> genesis of the episode. The schismogenesis is when we get the notification that uh, there's 10 minutes remaining on the Zoom call. It's a tool song. <laughs> schismogenesis. Uh, and I'm no. like being totally serious. I'm pretty sure it is. I think Schism is a tool song. Probably what I'm thinking of, yeah. <laughs> is that the one that's like in 13-8 time or something silly uh, like that? They're all in 13-8 time, aren't they? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to listen to some tool after this, but I'm not going to do it on my, my headphones or earbuds because they're so you're gonna listen to 20 miles away. A lot of your crappy, tinny, little laptop speakers. What are you talking about? This is an Apple. There's plenty of resonant bullshit space or some marketing stuff like that yeah that's what there's I'm resonant doing. bullshit and it's still bullshit yeah yeah it is totally yeah yeah um i am pretty happy though that they've made the imax different colors again yes that's uh that's my one thought on apple i like that they coordinate with um the keyboard and mouse and everything mm -hmm. no it's so pleasant like we're we're due to replace the imac that the kids use for school and I've been like, since the M1 was announced, I, I kind of was like, well, let's wait. Um, now I'm like, well, like I kind of had in mind, like what we needed requirement wise for storage, not really for RAM on the new M1 because it's a little funky. But the thing I wasn't prepared to think about was what color do we need on the wall? I feel like a big commitment. I it think is. I, I am waiting for them to do, to apply those colors to the MacBooks. I gosh, I hope so. Because they've got the colors for the phones, they've got the colors for the IMAX. Come on, let's just make it all all the way around. Let's let's add some brightness to to the like it's so it's so iconic this the gray the silver whatever uh, laptop. But wouldn't it be more iconic to be like solid you know red or yellow or like you know like and. But it's cyclical, right? Remember like the old iBooks that came in a bunch of colors, like the plastic clamshell iBook was, it's, you know, so like the color will be here for a few years and then people will tire of that and they will go back to this like very stark, much more simple design and we'll all be like, ooh, and. We don't have an I mean, it's a, it, What's old is new again. Anymore. Hell, look at the Greeks. They even did it with their columns, right? You had like. You know, whatever, like the, the Doric column was like very simple. And I'm sure that after like a bunch of Ionic columns, people were like, damn, that Doric column looks really slick. It's sharp. It pops. That, like, and that is complementary schismogenesis. It's a load of bullshit, but whatever. Uh, we don't oh, have an iMac just, anymore. Uh, yeah. We, uh, we retired it uh, because 
uh, Gavin uh, built his built a computer, so he has his own computer, and we don't have it, and it's up in his room now. So we now have uh, an empty space that is hopefully going to be filled by a glow forge, which is one of those laser engraver cutter things. Nice. Yeah. We when the kids started homeschooling, we mounted the iMac. Like I got an arm to mount it on the wall and the, the mm. adapter. So it's like underneath their, their desk, but keyboard and mouse can put away and it's mounted there. And so it can pivot to whoever's using it at whichever side of the table or, nice. you know, it's, it's super useful. Uh, love that setup. Um, but it was pretty slow computer then because it has a spinny hard drive. Mm -hmm. um, and so I bought an external SSD thinking like, well, this will get us like another like year out of it. It'll cost me 50 bucks, you know? Mm. Uh, but honestly, it's so much better. Like we've been using oh, really? that external hard drive now for two years and no longer than that, two and a half years. And I mean, it, it gave that computer a bunch more life. So did you like reinstall everything onto the SSD? totally cloned it. It took like 18 hours because of how slow the hard drive was to clone the SSD. And then I and then set up a bootloader to boot the, the just, SSD. Yeah. And then you just yep. wipe the other thing. Yeah. Well, that makes yep. sense. And it's, it's, and it's through USB, I guess three, I don't know, maybe it's two. It doesn't matter. It's fast enough. Like you can't tell that it's not. Gavin's you can tell if you're running on that spinny hard drive, it's fast enough. For the we kids. had, right. um, we had, a hard time getting Gavin's computer to read the SSD drive that he got for it. So I had an old hard drive that I ripped out of an old computer that I built. And I'm like, oh, well, let's just see if we can get Windows installed onto this and then we can figure it out. Because I think that a lot of the tutorials about like installing Windows onto an SSD started with having a separate hard drive and then cloning it over to the other the SSD drive. So we're like, well, let's do that. And that got us, that got it done. And then we were able to use the other thing as, as the, as the main drive. But I've noticed as I've been, uh, as I've, I mean, I don't use this computer often, um, but I've, I've gotten on it that it does seem certain, certain things seem slow and there's no reason it should be slow at all. And I think it is the, the old hard drive that it's just trying to churn through. Um, so we yeah. need to get that thing out of there basically. I don't, I, I don't know, like I, I, we would need to figure out, I would need to figure out probably what the implications of that are, because I don't think everything has been copied over. I think Windows still lives on, on the, the slow hard drive. I think. But then, it, but then, it, but then as it, as it builds, it like, uh, it's like creates a separate partition for the Windows operating system anyway. So maybe, maybe it doesn't even, maybe it's like just a hidden hard drive that I'm not seeing. I don't understand Windows anymore. It's been 20 years. It doesn't make any no. sense. To me. And that is complimentary schismogenesis. When you knew a thing and now you don't know a thing and you're trying to do that thing again and it's just, it doesn't make sense anymore. I feel like brains, when I hear the definition, the schism, you're going to be like, oh, of course, or, oh, that's a cool one. Those are the two options. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the only the only two options. I don't know. I think Dyson Sphere, the, the option was like, oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> But it wasn't oh. that, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, an, oh, it was like, oh, that's, that, yeah. Can we, can we, can we, go, can we take it, can we take a detour cooking with Gary? We always do. Uh, <laughs> when do we not take detours? I, so this past Sunday, I was like, I'm going to do chicken Every and dumplings. Detours. That was the topic. You're so going to do what? Topic. Chicken and dumplings is what I did this past Sunday. So, and so you made a Dyson sphere of chicken. You made one of those chicken balls. No, I don't want to talk about the, I don't want to talk about the chicken. Um, but I did, I did like, I, instead of like, I got just a whole chicken and went that route, but I want to talk about the, the dumplings because I used, um, whole wheat flour and actually like did like real dumplings on the counter, like hand rolled. And like, it was my first time, like attempting any kind of doughing operation. Uh, maybe not the first time, like the first time I might, first time solo, like I certainly helped, I've helped make cookies and whatnot, and, but uh, but it was good. It was edible. Cookies no are a different piece, though. Yeah, a cookie is forgiving because it's like got sugar stuff in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I think next time I um, I won't use whole wheat flour just for comparison's sake, just to see. But I was reasonably happy. Like nothing was raw. It was. It all worked out. <laughs> it, and uh, I made like a vegetarian version with some. I got the. Uh, uh, I went to. Publix and bought like three different colors of carrots. So Publix Katie, is a grocery chain for those of you who don't live in yeah. the South. Yeah. 
it's a very nice one. I mean, not very nice, but like produce is good. And then also I did um, potatoes on the side and they were also available in three colors. And I realized like, oh, it's Memorial Day. This is like a USA like hoorah thing. And then I was more disappointed. Because I was like, well, look at just the beauty of this. Like the colors, uh, the carrots just popped. It was great. And then I'm like, oh, oh crap. Have I, are either of you familiar? There's a Himalayan uh, food uh, that is like dumplings it's called momos. <sighs> no, I had momos. Yeah. You stole my heart. So I live on the edge of little Tibet and I'm surrounded by maybe 20 Tibetan restaurants. Oh my God. That's, oh my God. So there's, there's um, like, there's like one place locally that, that makes momos. They are so good. Yeah. And there's so many different options that they have um, every year they do a momo crawl where you get this little passport. Are you kidding me? <laughs> and you just go from place to place. It's impossible. They give you like five momos at each place and you're just like, I can't do this. <laughs> so yeah, there's, there's like four in your place, pocket. There's, there's one place that does momos. And then the other place that we had uh, momos from was one of those uh, spice kitchen, like, uh, incub- like incubator things that like, that works with the refugee community. Um, so, uh, so then they're one of those places made, made momos. So there's really only two places I can think of off the top of my head that, that makes momos. So we've like, cause we want momos. Um, I, I made it a point to try to figure out how to make them. And the thing with momos is uh, that they are dumplings, which a are going to be really difficult to work with like the dough anyway. And B um, the dough probably isn't gluten-free and trying to make a gluten-free dumpling like batter, it doesn't exist. So, our hack for creating uh, momos is using rice paper. Like you make you make the filling, you cook the filling, which is stir frying a bunch of shredded things, and you make the sauce. The sauce is the, the thing that makes the difference, right? And I got a good I got a good recipe for the sauce. And then you just get the the filling and you should put it in the uh, in a in a rice rice uh, paper and kind of fold it up a little bit, and then it becomes. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but it's pretty darn close and it doesn't taste any different because most of what you're tasting is is the filling in, in the sauce anyway mm-hmm. awesome because i was thinking as you're talking about your dumplings gary that like you're talking to two uh people who are generally gluten-free uh yeah. and uh dumplings aren't a thing <laughs> <laughs> we have to hack them i i um i was actually doing research on uh like uh gluten-free um like gluten-free dough last night because i was thinking i could probably yeah. i could probably make this gluten-free and i, no. I maybe you can make it, maybe you can make it gluten-free maybe you could make it gluten-free but you it's it's the you, for a lot of things like that it's like gluten-free or vegan but not both because either it's the gluten that holds it together or it's the egg that holds it together Dairy, yeah. and yeah. if you if you take both away then it then it becomes very difficult to have some sort of a replacement that that holds all the pieces together there are as someone sure done sure. a fair bit of baking if this is your first like foray i would like experiment more with just the regular old different types of flour and then go from there <laughs> yeah um yeah and i don't like mind i honestly don't mind failure in the kitchen like i'm happy to like make a dish and be like well that was a disaster and throw it away yeah yeah like it, it's fine. Like that's, that's kind of my purpose in doing this is like really like forcing myself to do things other than like, Hey kids, I'm going to make you grilled cheese sandwiches. Like I can do better than that. So yes, you can, I believe in you. And that is complimentary. I really love the science of it. That's the part I'm most excited about. Like, <laughs> like I, I'm, I'm Googling like, like why? Well, here's a good one. I don't understand. So in the, in the flower, I, um it 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 had like uh, get to the definition. Oh, no we're not uh we i took and i was all excited i was getting like frustrated with you for for delaying it but now i'm going to delay it so whatever uh, it, but i had to take butter and um and like hand mix the butter in right into small pieces and i was thinking about like what's like like there obviously this is not going to be completely integrated this butter right and then i poured milk in there so like it's it's nowhere close to gluten free or vegan obviously like it's just whatever but a true, dump, a true dumpling might not be. That's... <laughs> no, no. And uh, right. And then like I had to, I don't know. Uh, in any case, uh, and then I added it to like a, a chicken broth from a chicken I did whatever with in the morning. So yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, it was three strikes in like a single part of the dish. It's crazy. Um, 
but yeah, I was thinking as I'm mixing this butter in, like, like my inherent concept in my head is I need this to be completely integrated, right? And 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 I don't, and I didn't. I was able to restrain myself, <laughs> um, but but like I wanted it to be completely integrated because I wanted this like because in my head like it 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 has to work that way, but it doesn't. Like these little pockets of butter just become part of when you roll it out the thing, and then when you cut those things and you put them in, like whatever. If there's butter close to the edge, it's just going to melt and who cares? And if it's not, it's going to like get hotter than the surrounding dough and make, you know, finish that spot. Yeah. It, it you really... learn a lot from, from Great British Bake Off <laughs> about these sorts of From things. what? Great British Great Bake British Off. British Bake Off. Have you ever watched that? I have, but I've never, really, like, we turn it on and I'm like, we've watched it before and I've never really paid attention because I'm like, this is like way beyond anything I understand. Like I watch it for like the silly bits and like I always cheer for the goofiest person. Just and Ron is like, well, that's neat. And I'm like, I got nothing. But now I'm probably going to suggest we circle back to it. Do you have a pastry blender? A what? A, a pastry blender. It's like a, well. You know what for margaritas. Packed, but anyway. it's, a, it's a tool that helps you blend pastry. No, we do not. Instead of using a fork or something, I don't know. It's just it makes it easier. If you make enough pie crusts, you'll get one. <laughs> I um, I was like, I'm not gonna make a mess. I put the saran wrap down on the counter, thinking like I could put saran wrap down and work on top of that. <laughs> I know, I didn't, I didn't. And that's I what put parchment a bunch of paper is for. Top. If you're gonna do that, that's what parchment. And then I, yeah, I, no. oh, I no. took my dough and put it down there and started to roll. And I'm like, well, that was a failure. So then I was just <laughs> on the bare counter, which also worked out fine, but. It all turns out. This is how you learn things. So you complimentary know? schismogenesis. Yes. Complimentary schismogenesis is um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, based on cybernetic systems theory, which I don't, we can go into that a different time, but it's basically um, a series of positive feedback loops where each loop amplifies the action of the other. So A on B is acting on A on B. Oh. I was and right. It results in increasing entropy and then basically until they collapse i was correct you get two oh. schisms Not and really. then they, they get together and they, they the one schism says to the other schism you're really nice and then they create a baby schism and the baby schism goes on to create more schisms it's like an apollo 8 when the input from the computer indicated uh thrusting in the wrong direction i don't remember who was the pilot but as a result, they were actually like trying to follow the computer information that came in and they were making things worse. And so he ignored the computer, managed to get the spacecraft under control shortly before they blacked out and died. I think it was Apollo 8. I'm gonna have to, and now my day will be spent researching the Apollo program again. Well, there's there's two type of schismogenesis. There's sym symmetrical and complementary. So. Symmetrical would counteract itself? That's intensification between competitive rivals. So the same, action makes the same action in another one so like the cold war where it's like oh, they're shit. both doing the same action in response to each other versus like complementary would be the opposite so if i start talking louder and then you start talking quieter to try to get me to talk quieter and then you start talking louder because you think that i'm getting further away or something like that. yeah 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 wow <laughs> so pretty, in pretty like soon gary's just speaking, speaking and then and then we don't have a show. Well, according to Zoom, that's going to be the case. They all end um, in conflict. <laughs> so like in, in the computing world, it would be like if you called an API that called back to your API that in turn called an API or like a email that forwarded back and forth to itself. It is, it is a pyramid scheme. No, no, it's one of those, it's one of those uh, stupid email memes that are like forward, 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 re, 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 your your awesome uh, house plan today. Or re, 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 re. Yeah. <laughs> Love grandma. Yeah. <laughs> Love grandma. Love grand. Yeah. Just, it it wouldn't be your grandma's name. Yeah, it's, it's, like a, it's like a doc there. file. It's like a Word 95 yeah. doc file. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. 
Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. 